Can I join the Prime Minister in his words about the First Minister of Wales and the sad loss of his wife? Everybody, I think, knows just how close they were, um, and I know that he's absolutely devastated um, by her loss at the weekend. Mr Speaker, when the Prime Minister briefly emerged from his hibernation at the weekend, he raised more questions than answers. So, in the interests of integrity and accountability, can he set the record straight? Did his now former chair tell government officials that he was under investigation by the taxman before or after the Prime Minister appointed him? Yeah. Yeah. Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, I appointed the independent adviser to investigate this matter fully. He, he has set out his findings in detail over the weekend, and on receipt of those findings, I took action, and I'd refer the Honourable Gentleman to the Independent Advisor's report. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, come on. Anyone picking, up a, anyone picking up a newspaper in July last year would have known that HMRC and the National Crime Agency were investigating months before he appointed him. Mr Speaker, the Independent, 6th of July, new Chancellor's finances secretly investigated by the National Crime Agency. The Observer, three days later, 9th of July, revealed officials raised flag over tax affairs before he was appointed Chancellor. The Financial Times, the next day, 10th of July, pressure bills to explain his finances. Is he saying his officials hid this information from him, or was he just too incurious to ask any questions? Mr Speaker, as I've said before at the dispatch box, the usual appointments process was followed with respect to the Minister without portfolio. No issues were raised with me at the time of his appointment, but as the independent adviser's report makes clear, There was a serious breach of the ministerial code, and that's why I took decisive action on receipt of that report. So, in relation to his former chair, his defence is, nobody told me, I didn't know, I didn't ask any questions. Is the Prime Minister now also going to claim that he was the... Order, Prime Prime Minister. Mr Gullis, we heard enough last week. I can't hear what you're saying. I might not be able to hear what you're saying, but I can certainly see your mouth moving. It will be moving outside if it continues. Prime Minister. So, for his former chair, nobody told me I didn't know, I didn't ask any questions. Is the Prime Minister now also going to claim that he's the only person completely unaware of serious allegations of bullying against the Deputy Prime Minister before he appointed him? Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Gentleman asks uh, asks these questions about what was known, and I followed due process. I appointed an independent adviser as soon as I was made aware of uh, as soon as I was made aware of new information, the independent advisers conducted this process. But if he is so concerned about what people are saying and is so concerned about behaviour in public life, then recently one of his own MPs was forced to speak out because being in his party had reminded her of being in an abusive relationship. And then, and then, and then his own office was caught undermining her. He ought to be supporting her and her colleagues, but if he can't be trusted to stand up for the women in his party, he can't be trusted to stand up for Britain. Mr Speaker, at the last count, at the last count, the Deputy Prime Minister was facing 24 separate allegations of bullying. According to recent reports, some of the complainants were physically sick. One says they were left suicidal. How would he feel if one of his friends or relatives was being forced to work for a bully simply because the man at the top was too weak to do anything about it? Mr Speaker, I I noticed he didn't say anything about why one of his own MPs describes being in his own party. And Mr Nipper, when I was made aware of former complaints, I instructed a leading independent KC to conduct an investigation because I take action when these things happen. But what did he say at the weekend? He said at the weekend that hate 
had been allowed to spread unchallenged in the Labour Party under his predecessor. He was speaking as if he wasn't even there. But he was sitting right next to him, supporting him for four long years, not challenging. And it is typical of him, Mr Speaker, declining to lead, sitting on the fence, carping from the sidelines, and, and never standing up for a principle that matters. I want to hear both sides, and I'm not going to have, be interrupted by either side. And I'm particularly looking for people who want to continue this, because we will sort it out today. Keir Starmer. Speaker, it's just like one of his predecessors who treated questions about conduct as something to brush off, who thought that ducking responsibility was a perfectly reasonable response for a Prime Minister. At least in fairness, his predecessor didn't go around pretending he was a paragon of integrity and accountability. <laughs> But on that subject, was it a coincidence that the two people who arranged an £800,000 line of credit for the former Prime Minister were both shortlisted for plum jobs at the BBC and the British Council? Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, as we addressed previously, the appointments process for the BBC Chairman is rigorous, it's transparent, it's set out in a public code of conduct, and indeed, and indeed, was fully supported not just by an expert panel members, but also by the cross-party DCMS Select Committee, including, including where Labour members described the appointment as impressive. But Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, back. Back, back this week in terms of what is actually happening to the people of this country, he voted, he voted this week with the unions to oppose minimum safety levels. He voted with Just Stop Oil to water down the public order bill. And what do the unions and Just Stop Oil have in common? They bankroll him and his party, Mr Speaker. So while he sides with extremist protesters and union bosses, we stand up for hard-working Britons and school children. After 13 years in power, trying to blame the Labour Party for his failure to sort out the strikes is it's rank pathetic. The Tory party's addiction to sleaze and scandal has done huge damage to this country, and the cost to the public keeps adding up. We've got a justice system letting murderers walk the streets, heart attack victims waking hours for an ambulance, an economy that's shrinking quicker than his leadership. <laughs> And even I couldn't quite believe it when I saw that his government is expecting taxpayers to pay the legal fees for the member for Uxbridge defending himself over his lockdown rule breaking. A quarter of a million pounds. Surely even this Prime Minister can put his foot down, stand up to his old boss and tell him he made the mess, he can pick up the bill. Mr Speaker, he can't stand up to his union bosses. He can't, he, he can't, he can't stand up for Britain's school children today. And he can't stand up for the women in his party, Mr Speaker. We're getting on, we're halving inflation, we're growing the economy, we're reducing debt, we're cutting waiting lists and we're stopping the boat. While he can't even figure out what he believes in, we'll keep delivering for Britain. Yeah. 